because Shams had some news yesterday, which then trickled down into a million other things, Shams. Kick it off. Yeah, so from what I'm told, Kyrie Irving uh, has reached out to LeBron James to see whether James would come to Dallas. And we know Kyrie Irving is a free agent. And to me, this is more a subplot of his upcoming free agency. Clearly, he, he's become kind of a recruiter, putting on his recruiter cap, wants the Mavericks to improve their roster. And I, I do believe there's seriousness to Kyrie Irving wanting to play with LeBron James. We've seen it the other way around the last two years. It's been rumored that LeBron uh, wants to play with Kyrie Irving in L.A. And now you're kind of seeing the, the, the script being flipped a little bit. Um, and I, I think there's no question. Both Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic want the right players around them in Dallas. Um, and so it's unlikely that LeBron James is going to end up in Dallas. Just like it is, I think, unlikely that Kyrie Irving ends up with the Lakers. I think LeBron mm. James is happy in L.A. His son, Bronny, is going to play for USC this season. Um, but listen, in some ways, there is a good amount of leverage here that even LeBron James gets for something like this because there's no doubt he wants his team in L.A. to improve. The workload that he, that he had last year going into age 39. Um, so we'll see how this impacts uh, Kyrie Irving's free agency. What? what, what? <laughs> uh, I was about to take a sip of water. You need a coffee mug. Um, your drink? I, I don't, Sorry. Yeah, I just don't know how it would work, Sean. Like, first of all, you're too good, because I don't even know what? how you know this. I don't even know how this gets <laughs> out. Like, how is this news? But you're really good. But you're how does it work? <laughs> Who do they get rid of? Like, what are they trading everybody? Are they trading Bertans, Hardaway, Hardy, Green, every pick they have, I don't know, in the next 10 Not years? Happening. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. But if you can go and get a LeBron James, obviously, do you try and do it? Sure, like I think, but for one year, because he's already made it clear he's going to go try and play with Bronny if he were to have that opportunity, right? So I don't understand how this would work, but yeah, if you can go and get arguably the greatest player of all time, why not? Yeah, look, it's $48 million buying this? salary. Like, yeah, how do you like, even do that on that team? Uh, shout out to Kyrie. I'd love for LeBron to be part of Run It Back. Like, I'd love for him to play for a <laughs> bunch of teams. Like, I bet he would. The worst kept secret in the league the last year is these two desperately want to play together. Like they they have not hit it at all. My thing when I watch this is the Lakers. Oof. They have clearly they have made it clear that they don't want to trade a haul for him. They've had three opportunities to go get him and did not. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, does, 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 does Mark Cuban want LeBron? I bet he does. But how do you even make that happen? Would you even do that? LeBron's not leaving LA. Kyrie's not going to LA apparently. So. It's, I don't want to say it's a non-story, but it's just a hilarious, another hilarious Kyrie LeBron thing. Not, like, not at one mention, point they'll play together again, I'm sure. Once you get them, then how do you fill out the roster? You just hope guys take way less and get guys on minimum deals to kind of surround this trio. That would be really good. But again, I just, I don't, I don't see how it's possible. And I don't like, why did they leave each other in the first place if they just want to go right. back and that'd be the big storyline? Sometimes you think grass is greener and it turns out it's not. It's all dead and garbage. But here's the thing. Let me be the ass for the minute. For um, <laughs> Kyrie as a recruiter, just hear me out. Is it possible that Kyrie, knowing that he wants the big max deal and that half the world thinks it's a bad idea and the other half thinks they're stuck and they have to do it, is he just not showing himself as a, quote, recruiter Look at me, I'm invested in the team. I love Dallas, I wanna be a maverick. I wanna make the team better. Look what I'm trying to do in a ploy to sort of bamboozle the front office and being like, no, he's totally yeah. in. Yeah, and you know what? It gets the fan base on his side too. Like, oh my gosh, look, he's trying to recruit LeBron James. It's like he went for the, the big whale, like yeah, the biggest so of whale. I definitely get it. But then also at the same time, he's going to Lakers playoffs games in LA yeah, trying to get leverage true. from other teams. So I think he's definitely playing a little chess, not checkers, but also he's an extreme talent. And like you said, maybe it is a bad idea to sign him long-term this summer, but they made their bed and now they're sleeping in it with him. And I think he goes back there. I think he gets a three or four year max deal there because they have to. Mark has to, right? He gave up a lot of assets to get Does him. He have to? It, it didn't really pan out for this three month trial last season. But I mean, you're looking at still the best backcourt going into next season if they lock up Kyrie Irving and Luca. So, Ch Chandler, you've been a recruiter at different points. I mean, how often are you going after the big guy, you know, the, the big fish? And then you, if you don't get the big fish, which clearly, like, the odds of him actually getting LeBron James, I don't know what they are. You know, I think it's zero to zero point zero. Zero point zero, maybe I zero mean. five. <laughs> but like, at what point, if you're Kyrie Irving, 
is this a ploy to get other players that are also in the marketplace? It's does this set the stage for that? A little bit of both, and I, I was 50%. I got Dwight Howard when I wanted him, and then DeAndre Jordan just broke my heart. <laughs> and that was actually for Dallas as well. So, uh, yeah, it's tough because you want to better your team. You want to make your job easier, so you want to get the best possible players. Um, this just seems like a, this seems like a, you know, he's swinging for the fences here and it's probably not going to happen. But listen, do they even become an immediate contender if LeBron goes there? Like how many games does he play? Is he going to still play at the same level he played this year? Like I'm not putting all my eggs in a basket. He already just did that. Mark already just did that with Kyrie Irving. I'm not doing that again for LeBron James for one year. For one year. Okay. So as a recruiter. With Kyrie, I mean, we've seen with KD. Is he a good recruiter? <laughs> well, we'll I mean, what's, what's his? Uh, what is the game plan? I mean, what's the resume? I mean, I guess the resume is Kevin, and if you let them tell it, you know, they came to that together right. and, and just needed a needed a city, and it didn't it didn't end as great as they wanted it to. They both <laughs> admitted that. Well, look so how fun they were. It's Kyrie. Kyrie's an enigma because. Everybody in the league loves him to a man, and he's just like a great guy. And they they think he he plays beautiful basketball. And but if you ask like ownership for different teams or general managers or maybe not even coaches, I feel like coaches mm. like him too. He's he's obviously a very interesting character. And, and can he get LeBron to Dallas? Probably not. But is he smart and does he know exactly <laughs> what this means as far as his leverage for getting a contract, for his ability to get other guys, mm. for the way he looks as a team player, and all of that? Oh, he knows all this for sure. He's brilliant. He knows exactly what he's doing. You know what it feels like? He's like the NBA Leonardo DiCaprio. He gets all the <laughs> baddest ones, but they don't last. <laughs> By yeah. the way, the latest Leo DiCaprio, just to go off Another on a tangent, one. is Gigi's 22-year-old friend. It's crazy. How? And the, again. He must be dumb, because if he's just talking to 20-year-olds, then there's nothing going on up there. I don't think there's too much That's my own two cents. Him. Shut up, Chandler. Chandler's like, he's my hero. Yeah, um, he's awesome. Let's just put on our make-believe hats for a second and, and, and just think that this could potentially be something. What can Dallas even offer in a trade? Well, it, it would have to be literally their biggest <laughs> salaries. They have two first-round picks that they can trade. <laughs> you, you really have to go all in on that. The only other option, if you're not going to get acceptance on Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi Cleaver, basically you stack these mm. contracts together, two first-round picks, and if that, you know, obviously that's a hard sell uh, for, for the Lakers. Luka Doncic is the only other player, and they're not going to trade Luka, <laughs> right? So you're trying to get LeBron James on a team with Luka and Kyrie. Um, but listen, like, is there a universe where if LeBron, if LeBron James is like, I want to be in Dallas, and if, there's, if there are players in the league that have built up the equity to say, I want to go here, trade me here, I mean, Kevin Durant just a few months ago, he wanted to go to Phoenix, he ended up in Phoenix. So, but again, that's a, that's a very alternative universe, you know, that, that I don't think we're living in. I that's mean, the market, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> Two young guys, another starter, a hall of draft picks. <laughs> And those are things that Dallas doesn't have. Like, how does, what does you even trade for LeBron James at this point in his career? Can you just play three? I mean, if you could just play three. <laughs> yeah, and again, they might want that. <laughs> the Lakers don't want Tim Hardaway. They don't want Bertans. They, like, what, they, what, they have to be, there has to be some sort of Jalen Brown, some, some staple piece right. in the trade to make it work or make sense, in my opinion. And Three-way trade? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, they got to bring oh in a God. three. Yeah, now we're talking Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, and three ways all of a sudden. <laughs> so. We're back, baby. This show it's is early. taking a turn. <laughs> 7 <-08. laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> if you're Luca, by the way, we haven't even really talked too much about Luca. It's, it's still his team last time I checked. If you're Luca, do you even want LeBron James? Yeah, I would, because we all know how passive LeBron James is. We all know how he likes, he hmm. gets off by making the extra pass, playing unselfish, almost to a fault this season. Um, but yeah, I think Le Le Luca just needs help. He, he would love to have Kyrie Irving back. He would love to have LeBron James. He would love to add just pieces that can kind of manage his workload, not make him have the ball so much in his hands. And there's going to be still games where he dominates and he takes over games. And he, it's his team. No matter who they bring in this year, it's still his team. But yeah, if you can get a generational talent like LeBron, who's also going to fill the stadium, the, the amount of jersey sales, everything that LeBron brings, <laughs> the Mavs and Luca would, would die for. But again, it just seems very far-fetched. LeBron in another jersey? That's just weird to think about. Well, I, it's, I mean, his history says if he goes, he'll get to a title at some point. I mean, I don't know if he's doing that at 38, 39, 40 years old. But if this is the best player on the market, the Mavericks should pursue him. I think on the flip side, like the Lakers, people have been saying this for a while, they should consider what they can get for him going forward. And if that's – if they can – he has – what does he have, a player option next, option season. next season? So they have to consider their future without LeBron James – this is, I don't think, the deal, but maybe that deal exists. Maybe there is a three-team trade 
maybe there is something. I wonder if deep down in the truth box that they have over there at the crypto, if they actually would consider a LeBron James trade. I think they should. I don't know if they would. We always talk like LeBron has all the leverage, and, and maybe that is true, but the team itself, the Lakers, how much leverage do they have over him? I mean, to an extent, I think both sides right now, it's interesting. You know, the Lakers, they just make those trades at the trade deadline, get all those guys, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, Rui Hachimura, that can help them win right now, and they end up going to the Western Conference Finals. D'Angelo Russell gets benched in game four, and I think overall, when you look at the landscape, when you talk to team executives, they feel like, uh, you know, the Lakers could be in the market for a point guard, right? So when you think about the available point guards, Fred Van Vliet, Kyrie Irving, their best bet might be to bring back D'Angelo Russell. But I think what you're going to see over the next, this, you know, between now and July 1, July 2, is like, can they get a point guard? Can they, uh, can they see what's available in the marketplace? And so... Uh, LeBron James, clearly the workload he had this year, at the age of 38, can he do the same thing at 39? The amount of games he played, the minutes that he played, even in the playoffs, the minutes that he was playing on a torn tendon. Um, I think this, this offseason will be interesting to see how much the Lakers prioritize decreasing that workload for him. Yeah, again, I think it's something they explore. I think they look for it. If they can get something in return that can pair well with what they just traded for this deadline, then yeah, go for it. But again, I think we all agree that this is kind of far-fetched and, and Dallas just seems like more of a want than actually so happen. if you're the lakers like how do you go about this offseason trying to decrease the workload on lebron or, or, or do you think you don't or, need to I, I, even like last year i wish they would have started the year with that team they were a real team right they were yep. a contender they were deep they had shooting yep. their their pieces made sense that team that they threw out there in the beginning of the season didn't even make sense and they had no shot they started off two and ten or two and twelve whatever it was but uh, you know, I think they have to continue to get depth. They have to re-sign Austin Reeves, and, and I, I agree with you, Sean, but I think there's not really a better option out there than D'Lo this summer at point guard, um, although he struggled in the postseason. I mean, it's, it could be the best they could get, so I think they kind of run it back here. They, they try and save LeBron's legs as much as they can, but it also has a lot to do with Anthony Davis, right? He's got to be healthy. He's got to be a dominating player that he's been in the past. It's Austin funny. Reeves it's, highlight reel. It's yeah. funny how the cookie crumbles, right? They're the only team that got swept by the Nuggets now. The, the, even the Timberwolves got a win off the Nuggets. True. But they beat the Warriors. So it's like, yo, what is this team exactly? Are they true contenders? Can they beat the Nuggets in a series with what they have? They beat the Warriors. The Warriors are the reigning champions. What are they? I, I agree with Shams. I think they need a point guard to obviously seek that out. They should be wondering if they can get Kyrie to L.A. They should be thinking about that rather than LeBron to Dallas. But I feel like that's part of this. Kyrie's up to something. I need the He's most chaotic version of this story. Basically, to Chandler yeah. wants them to run it up and run it back. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Do the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> Rapid okay. Chan. I don't uh, know. <laughs> we've got a special. Chandler, why don't you tell us who's coming up next after the break? We got arguably the best coach in the NBA. My favorite coach I've ever played for. <laughs> Head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, J.B. Bickerstaff. Coming up next. <laughs> Bernie's son. <laughs> <laughs>